Why are we learning what we are learning? This has to be one of the most common rhetorical questions students ask when critiquing the current education system. Why should we care? And at least from personal observation, a lot of the response has been for a lack of a better phrase, a hit or miss. The answer has always been either A, we need complete reform of the education system because of course students don't need to remember the exact order of US presidents or all of the enzymes in cell respiration or B, nothing. The more I think about it, the more I realize that both responses start to conflate. Even as a strong believer that all institutions can and should be reformed as times change, option A isn't exactly going to fix all our problems right now because option A takes time. There are many, if not more, steps for complete education reform to happen than there are adenosine triphosphates produced through cellular respiration. 36 molecules, by the way. Thank you, HL Biology. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but what I am saying is that as a student, I've learned the survival skill of dealing with the cards I'm dealt. For someone whose best small talk line is, I'm so tired, I can genuinely say that I have managed to find a way to care about subjects I'm not exactly the biggest fan of. Not because I only chose classes I enjoyed, but because I found something about every single class I could latch onto as my primary reason to care. I am an advocate for social justice, and it is global social issues that can make me truly care more than anything. And yes, I managed to find a way to incorporate my passion for these issues into every class. Of course, in classes like psychology and English, it was easy, but it was biology, chemistry, and math that made me most surprised at how easily I could become absorbed into them, especially when the latter two are the classes that I struggle with the most. In biology, I realized that I became most impassioned when we were talking about HIV AIDS, which just so happened to be one of the most catalyzing events in the LGBTQ plus movement. In chemistry, I found myself most immersed in ozone depletion when realizing its connection to the Kyoto Protocol. In math, when doing my practice internal assessment for the IB, I proposed to do a statistical analysis on funding in women's sports versus performance. In essence, there was always a way for me to connect my personal interest to the classes I had to take. But I'm not here to shift the blame onto the students, to say that they choose not to care. In fact, that's the complete opposite of what I believe. Actually, I have, in classic debater fashion, three observations I've had in my personal experience. First, every single person has something that they truly care about, something that makes them geek out more than anything. Second, the only time I've seen my friends truly and actually enjoy a project in a class they say they hate is when they're given autonomy in their work autonomy that is oftentimes too rare. Third, I've never met someone who loved every single class they take, and I've never been in a class where every student loves that subject either. In fact, most students arguably are only truly impassioned about one or two. But what I believe is that just because we sometimes don't care about some subjects does not make us care less. Starting with my first observation, everyone has something they care about even if they say they don't or they haven't found it yet. So what I personally believe the best thing teachers can do to support this journey is to give us a chance to explore, leading me to my second observation. Autonomy is something that we cherish more than teachers might realize. It may be easy to fall down the slippery slope of how giving choice to students will make us choose the easier topic, but to that I say, so what if we do? Because my third observation is the impossibility of us being absolutely passionate about every one of our classes, but that doesn't mean we simply don't care. Personally, I see school as a chance for us to explore every subject equally and to think to ourselves, in our most boring classes, where does our mind drift to? As Aristotle once said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That's what I think school is. Not how much we like each individual class summed up together, but rather how our dislike for one class led to our epiphany of our enjoyment for another. I must admit, the title of the speech was slightly misleading. Making students care might have sounded like a tutorial, but it's also a statement. 
in which I contest by saying that you can't ever make students care about every subject all the time. Even in the last scene of Dead Poets Society, just as Robin Williams' character, Mr. Keating, a cultural symbol for impassioned teaching and spurring a fire in his students was being fired, some students were still sitting down in perceived carelessness. Because I don't think there is a way to make students care. What you can do is offer autonomy of exploration, which is why I believe the best thing a teacher can do is to give them a chance to care, a choice to care. Thank you.